Welcome to another CBA Level 3 Grill Coaching Session. This session is focused on the welding collar and relies on you having watched the Forging a Bottom Tool Blank Coaching Session. Typically a welded collar welded onto round bar can be finished at the edge of the anvil after uh, securing the weld on the flat face of the anvil. In this case, due to using a flat bar as a central stock, because we've got the central style is a three quarter by three eighth flat bar, we cannot get the hand hammer into position for, to secure the weld without causing damage to the flat bar. We need another method of welding. I'm opting for a closed die method of welding. The stock will need to be rotated within the tooling to complete the weld. We are thus required to make room within the tooling to allow that flat bar to rotate. I'm going to substitute a one inch round bar for the three quarter inch wide flat bar that we're going to use on the central style. But remember that the flat bar has to be measured across the diagonal to get a more correct clearance measurement. And at the very least, the welded collar has to finish at one inch in diameter as per the drawing. I'm going to come in a little from the end of the bar and I want to mark off 9 16 of an inch uh, gap for the half inch collar. <clears throat> Why 9 16 Due to the offset fullers having more surface area on one side of the fuller than the other, the collar material is going to get smushed as the bar moves between the fullers. This is going to result in a narrower but larger diameter collar material. You'll notice I make my marks. I go around with a hacksaw first just to sort of get those marks in a little bit. Uh, and then I go around with a three square file, a triangular file, uh, and I just make those marks a little bigger, those hacksaw blade cuts. And that's going to help me position my guillotine. The enemy when fullering is inertia. If you would cut the end groove first, then that piece is going to waggle around in space as you cut the near piece, that bit that's nearest the, the parent bar. You have a very definite stress riser going on with that transition between the taper to the collar. And when that moves around, it's going to result in a crack or the end is just going to fall off. Cut, cut the near side first and then cut the far groove. I think for me, I would first conduct a test piece on the flat bar of the central style to get an idea of the diameter that you need to wrap your collar around. This is going to be the when finished, and that's important, dimension for the blank. That's after filing. Leave room for cleanup as you butcher in to isolate the collar material. As I said earlier, due to the different surface areas of the offset fullers, there'll be some migration of material into the collar material. And that's something we need to be aware of later. I'm showing it with the rule balanced on top and you can see that the, there's a little gap there uh, underneath the rule on the parent bar. I like to use a half round bastard file to clean up the fullered grooves and that helps leave a slight curve to the transition area between the taper and the collar material. Again, you did your test piece so you can look at the finished dimension and I'm using a set of calipers here to check that dimension on my blank. Shaping the collar is nothing more than a stock removal of square to octagon to round. I'm showing using a file here, but if I had access to a belt sander, that's where I'd be. So here's the finished blank and the proposed bottom tool is shown below it. What we need to do now is let the blank in to the bottom tool. If we just heat the bottom tool and try and drive the blank in, that is going to be a tremendous amount of work. So we're going to need to do it by degrees. There's going to be a lot of forging on these top and bottom tools. They're both identical until you sort of turn around. Um, when you make the tooling blanks, leave them all tall, about inch and a half tall or so. Typically I take mine down to inch and a quarter. This one I'm going to ask you to leave inch and a half tall, by whatever it is square. They will flatten out as you work to create the top and bottom tools. A constant part of the blank, as I've shown with those two red lines there, is a central round section, and that's seen at the neck of the collar. 
This is where I'm going to start making my bottom tool as it helps me position everything else. I'm using a 5 16 to 3 8 of an inch handheld fuller and I'm just going to start a groove across the face. Now as you continue to work on this tool that groove will get larger so don't go too big to start off with. <clears throat> my next thing I need is something to make the depression for the collar. So I'm going to use a piece of one inch by half inch flat bar as my proposed collar is going to be one inch in diameter by half an inch thick. I want you to take the end to a half round first and then chamfer all the corners. Once you've finished with the forging, take your hot rasp, just finish the end. Uh, you might want to consider case hardening the end to preserve it if you're going to make more than a couple of tools. Using that existing fullered groove as a landmark, drive the collar tool into the swage. Try and keep it as square to the fullered groove as you can because that will help with your collar later. Take the depression down to 7 16th of an inch or so when measured from the top surface of the block. That's going to leave you room for a little clean up later and that's important. So I'm showing the uh, setup there, top uh, left, driving the, the tool in and then the result bottom right. The next job is to remove or in this case to place some of the material for the tapers on each side of the collar material. Just banging the blank into the bottom tool without removal is going to be hard work and it can damage the bottom tool. So we need to remove some of that material so you can drive in that blank and driving in the blank then will make a tool that will allow you to rotate the flat stock between the two top and bottom tools <clears throat> to create your weld. I'm using the same handheld fuller here as I used earlier. And I prefer this over a handled or rotted fuller as I find it easier to use. Take care not to ding the transition area and I'm showing that by the arrows in that bottom right photograph. Remember how we said we we're going to leave room for a little clean up on the collar depression? Here's the clean up. So just in case there was any sort of movement of that uh, material there as you um, fill it in to remove some of the material for the tapers I want you to go in and clean up that depression. We showed earlier that there is some migration of the material as you butcher in to make those tapers and that the collar is going to be higher than the surrounding stock. That's an issue. Um, we need to remove the uh, excess material and get everything down into plane. If you don't do that then you're going to run the risk of creating a fracture at the stress riser which is at the transition area between the taper to the collar material. And here is the, the fracture. Um, I didn't remove or make flat and you can see that as the two ends moved around then it created a fracture right there at the neck or the stress riser. The little shoulders here that I've shown with the arrow don't really matter because you have a depression that is larger than the uh, diagonal measurement of the flat bar that we're going to use in the central style, so not a big deal. As a smith working alone, and I presume you're going to be too, I want this tool to be a hands-free tool. I'm going to create two bottom tools that are going to be identical. Um, showing the method I just did and then I'm going to cut the peg down of one tool to about a one inch long spike if you will and I'm going to use that as the top tool and then I'm going to weld on a spring my spring looks like a round ended staple I use about a 20 inch length of one inch wide by a quarter inch thick flat bar and it's a little heavy for the spring for my ease of use uh, I wouldn't sacrifice the one inch measurement as it helps stabilize the two tools but I would reach for slightly thinner material if I had it available. This tool is under a lot of duress. Um, bevel the ends of the staple and preheat the blocks after wiring them together with a blank, blank sandwich between them um, before you start welding. You want these welds to be good welds. Here's my finished tooling in action. You might find it necessary to run a, right, uh, a round file between the two to get the correct size right there at the neck. Um, if you 
if you would, I would ask you to do a couple of welds first and see where the, the tools are biting into your flat bar before you make that decision. Once you've got your tools dialed in, consider case hardening them for longevity. The second bar that you can see there is um, a lever opening bar. It is welded at that point, that point only. It's not welded to the other end of the staple, uh, otherwise it's going to deform the staple. And it really helps when I'm getting the collar material out. I use my hammer to keep the two bars apart or the two tools apart going into the weld, but getting it out I need the lever. And it saves me having to put my hand in there near what is then a very hot tool. This marks the end of this particular session, so the next session should be on the welded collar itself. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.